Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the D Time Love Show. Today we have a Q&A and I haven't done this for a long time and the questions have been coming through. So you give me your questions and I'm obliged to answer. And one question that I wanted to discuss first today is, uh, let me just get my phone out because um, let me just read out this question. And something that I've noticed actually, the reason why I'm going to discuss this question today and Please, guys, don't get offended that I've answered this question before I answered yours. It's just that I've been manic with work and I'm going to do answer the questions that I feel that I can answer easiest first. And um, this is a que- this was the question in hand. Um, Hi, D, loving the content. Thank you, sir. A big fan of the channel. Brilliant stuff. I currently own a Citizen Pro Master, the one you recommended on your channel, and I absolutely love it, the Eco Drive version. I'm a big fan of the Tudor Black Bay, me too, and the Omega Seamaster. I want to add one as my premium diver. Um, and I'm also looking to add an affordable diver, e.g. Seiko XKX or the Orient Ray. Uh, what else have we got here? I was wondering your thoughts as you own all of these watches. And I want you to think of what I should do. As I have around about the 2.5k, uh, I take it, British pound sterling. Thanks for your help. Please do not mention my real name, but my nickname is the Gun Master. <laughs> Interesting nickname, uh, Gun Master. Well, first of all, yes, I do own um, all of those watches you mentioned. And um, I'm going to start off by telling you something. And I think it's very important that you do not get confused. And you, look, there's so many YouTubers out there and... It's very confusing, especially when you want to decide what watch to buy. I always suggest to people, if you can go and try on the watch, because everybody has a different size wrist. Um, It might not be comfortable for you for whatever reason. And I would suggest go and try the watches you want to buy before you pull the trigger. So go into an authorised dealer, or if you know of anybody that owns the watches, just get them to show you the watch and try it out and see how that watch makes you feel. It's so important. But before I go into this subject matter in more detail, let's do a quick wristwatch check. Today I'm sporting my Seiko Samurai Blue Lagoon. Uh, I love this watch. I haven't worn it for a while and I wanted something to put a smile on my face. I hate winter. I hate doom and gloom, London weather. And this watch, that beautiful Blue Lagoon doll, always puts me in a positive mood and uh, yes I love this watch very cool watch indeed but going back to the question in hand what do I recommend what should you do first of all go and try the watch and what I would say to you is just because one youtuber has this opinion that they think maybe the true the black bay is better than your mega seamaster there'll be someone else that will say to you the Omega Seamaster is a better watch. Now, I don't, I'm not sure whether you're looking to buy new or used, but I'm gonna go on the fact that you've got two and a half thousand pounds and what you should do in terms of buying a premium diver, you know, and an affordable every dive watch. I think that's what you were, your question was, to be honest with you, Mr. Gun Master. Uh, I just can't get over your nickname. I, I don't know why they call you the Gun Master, but I hope you're not a... Uh, Uh, lord of weaponry and stuff like that (laughs) but anyway um yeah so my what i would say to you is go and try the watch you know go and try the one that you want to purchase um the true the the new true the black bays are pretty much the same sort of price as the omega seamaster i think there's about three four hundred pound difference on the omega seamaster but i'd be honest with you you probably can get a bigger discount on the omega seamaster So really the price really does balance itself out. Um, What do I prefer? Um, I'll be honest with you, I have the, let's have a look here, I've got, I own both. I own both guys. Uh, So I own the Omega Seamaster Electric Blue Pre-Ceramic and I own the new Tudor Burgundy Bezel with the new in-house movement and um, it's 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 very difficult to say which one I prefer. I mean, both of them are good watches. And first of all, you won't be disappointed with either, you know. Um, if you're going new, you're probably going to be considering, if you want to compare this 
genuinely to the Omega Seamaster would be the new coaxial movement, which is a very, very nice watch. Look, spec-wise, let's be honest, spec-wise, I can only go on the basis of what I own here, guys, okay? So if you were looking to buy the Omega Seamaster Electric Blue, there are both quartz and automatic versions. Um, I would always suggest go with the automatic version. Um, the extra large version, they're more desirable. Um, you will find them prices right now, I think for the uh, 41 millimeter electric blue on the stainless or titanium bracelet, whatever version you can find, will go from anything depending on the condition between 1500 pounds and just under 2000 pounds sterling, okay? Um, if you're getting it with box and papers, you're probably gonna be paying an extra two to 300 pounds. But without the box, you could probably find them for about, I don't know, 16, 1700 pounds, I would say. Um, depending where you're buying them from. If you're getting them on eBay, if you're going to a used boutique, you're probably gonna end up paying about, just around about the 2000 pound mark, which is fair enough. And it's an absolutely stunning watch, I have to say. Uh, it's one of those watches where, I think the electric blue, the reason why I went with the Omega Seamaster electric blue, I find it to be a far more glamorous version with that dial, that electric blue dial, it just really stands out. And especially with that finish of the stainless, high-end finish, stainless steel finish, it just pops, it sings to me. It's always been an Omega Seamaster that I prefer. I actually prefer this version over the James Bond version. I had the choice of buying either, and I went for this one because I, you know, this one has the Omega Speedmaster uh, bracelet, very comfortable indeed. And I do prefer the scissor hands on this version of the Omega Seamaster. Now, the Tudor Black Bay is a very interesting watch that it's, it's been an itch of mine that I've always wanted to get the Omega, I'm uh, sorry, the, uh, they said it that, I always wanted to get the Tudor Black Bay, but I held out to get the one with the new in-house movement with the 70 hour power reserve plus. Um, aluminum bezel, the patina, that, you know, this is basically a watch designed, you know, a bit a bit like a reissue of the good old vintage Tudor stroke Rolex Submariners of, of the old, you know, which cost a hell of a lot of money now, very collectible indeed. And it just is a very desirable timepiece. And you find that people that own the Tudor Black Bay are people that are veteran watch collectors and people that have you know high-end rolex pieces but have room for the truder now some people this is a holy grail watch for some people who are uh premium watch collectors will have this as an everyday watch so for me it's in the middle it's it's a bit of both for me and i absolutely love it it's a go go it's one of my go-to watches at the weekend or evening where that I absolutely love and it's beautifully constructed as well. So for me, what I would say to you, my advice is to you is the world would be a very boring place if everybody had the same Tudor or if everybody had an Omega Seamaster Electric Blue. Now, the thing is with the Omegas Seamasters, there's so many of them, to be honest with you, you're, you could be there for a long time trying to find out which one is best suited to you. Now, if you're going new, you know, the, the new Coaxial Omega Seamasters are absolutely beautiful, stunning with their matte black dials and, you know, it's such a cool, there's so many different variations. Just pick the one that sings to you, that talks to you the most. Because I'm sitting on the fence with this, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna recommend one is better or the other. If you were looking spec wise, spec wise, just on paper, I think the Omega Seamaster edges it spec wise, but you could find 500 pound watches that have different specs. It comes down to heritage, history, background of the watch, design, function, quality, the aesthetics of the watch. Only you can make that opinion because everybody's opinion is different. But for me, I think the world would be very boring if we all owned the same watches. How boring would that be? It's a bit like the common question when it comes to what is the best executive 
car, you know, a business executive saloon. And the most common, you know, answer is BMW 5 Series or the E-Class Merc. And, um, you know, you'll find that, you know, in the UK they say it's the uh, BMW 5 Series, but in Australia it could be the E-Class Mercedes, or in the States it will be the E-Class Mercedes. So it all comes down to opinion. So, for example, the BMW 5 Series is slightly has a more sportier, you know, drive, what it used to be, and the Mercedes E-Class was always renowned for being more comfort, comfortable. Um, so it depends what you're personally looking for, but I'll be honest with you guys, you would not be disappointed in owning either of these watches. They're very, very cool watches indeed, and just go with the one that sings to you the most. Me, I think there's room to have both in the collection. Why not get one now and save up to get the other one? Why not? You know, there's nothing wrong with it, you know? I went for this burgundy one because I have nothing in the collection like it. I think that burgundy bezel pops, it talks to me. I love the patina, I love the snowflake hands. I love it on a distress leather strap. I've also got the bracelet that I'm gonna review on this watch soon. But I got this electric blue because for me, this Omega Seamaster speaks to me the most. I don't know, when that the sunlight hits that dial, it's special. You know, it's hypnotizing, you know, it really does pop. Both of these are, I love them. I, I couldn't say, it's like saying to me, which of your kids do you prefer, guys? And for me, I would say to go for what you like. What Just because I like it, doesn't mean you're gonna like it. Let's be honest, guys, you know? But um, then we go into the fact that I also have a, a couple of affordable um, dive watches that are, the Seiko XKX and the Orient Ray. And again, it depends which style you, you prefer. What sings to you, you know? What would you prefer to wear every day? Now for me, sometimes I prefer my Orient Ray or the Orient Mako, that you like to call it. And sometimes I prefer the Seiko XKX. Yet again, it comes down to personal preference. And these watches are so cheap, you can have both in your collection. So I don't know what the fuss is all about. You know, there's a cult following for both the Tudors and the Omega. I think you've got room to have them both in your collection. Buy the one that you wanna buy now, and at a later date, save your money and buy, you know, the Omega Seamaster. The Omega Seamaster, um, there's so much variation out there um, that could be quite damaging to the to the, the Omega Seamaster as well in the fact that when you talk about Omega Seamaster you don't know what model you know you're referring to but in a way you know there are models out there that people will appreciate depending on the type of person they are you know there's even gold Omega Seamasters there's the skeleton has the James Bond the electric blue the list goes on the chronos you're gonna find one Omega Seamaster that you prefer and you like. So just go for it, guys. That is my answer to it. Go with what your heart and what your head tells you. And um, I wouldn't listen too much to every YouTuber out there, you know. I'll give you an honest opinion, I, I don't. You know, someone would say, why, you can either only go for one or the other. You know, you can only buy either this one or this one. It's, listen, guys, that's absolute bullshit. Buy what you want, these are cheap, affordable watches that you can't go wrong with. You can buy the Seiko XKX and you could buy the Orient Ray. You know, just get onto Amazon or eBay. As long as they're, you know, a respectable, you know, dealer and they've got a good history, go for it. What have you got to lose, okay? I would actually buy from someone, you know, that you can return it within 28 days if you're not happy with the product for whatever reason. If you have a change of heart, you know, just send it back. That's what I would say to you, but I'm happy with both. I love the Seiko XKX, probably the most hyped, affordable watch. And, you know, a bit over overhyped and overrated for sure, the Seiko XKX. Or you can go with the Orient Ray 2, the new version. Um, I, I just stuck with this. I just couldn't be bothered to buy another one and sell it. What's the point? Such a cheap watch. I love the character of this of this Orient watch, it's very cool, especially the Pepsi bezel, very cool watch indeed. Um, probably a bit more underrated than the Seiko X, just as good, 
just as well made, um, actually owned by Seiko Orient R as well. So come on guys, you know, the Orient is a more, goes under the radar a little bit more. They probably don't get the appreciation that they deserve, but the Orient is just as good as a Seiko XK, same spec. Probably the actual bezel on the Seiko XK, XKX is slightly better, but you could say that the True the Black Bay bezel is a lot better than the Omega Seamaster. But the Omega Seamaster has a helium escape valve, uh, you know, but you know, and it's 300 meters water resistance, you know. So they've all got their pros and cons. But for me, buy what you think suits your style and personality, okay? Because at the end of the day, the world would be so boring if we all owned the same watches. There would be no debates, there'll be no arguments. It will just be such a boring subject. I wouldn't be involved in watches. For me, as a watch collector, I like to share my experience with these watches and I've enjoyed them. They're brilliant watches, both the Omega Seamaster Electric Blue. For me, I highly recommend and I highly recommend my True the Black Bay. Anyway, guys, I'm going to try and get through as many questions as I can. I hope you enjoyed my honest opinion. Yet again, it's another politician's answer. I'm sitting on the fence on this one. But for me, it's most important for, for you guys is to try the watch. See how it feels on the wrist. Because in the reality, having a look at the watch on YouTube or in a photo, you may feel differently once you put the watch on your wrist. You may like it or dislike it, okay? But don't forget another option, my friend, is the Seiko Summarize. Have a look at them, at them before you consider the, just the Seiko and Orients, you know, have a look at the Seiko, um, what do you call it, Turtles, you know, the, 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 you know, when it comes to Seiko, you know, I, I honestly think if you're on the market, unless you really love this watch, you know, and you want an iconic watch, and you want to be part of the SKX fan club, then go for it, and with the Orient as well, but if you want manual wind hacking, you have to look at some of the, the newer Seikos that have come out, because they are absolutely brilliant watches and are great value propositions as well as an everyday watch they're absolutely great and as your premium watch um you know go and wear them go to an authorized dealer get a feel for them and then go out there and try and find the best possible deal that is my advice to you guys anyway i hope you enjoyed today's um, q a questions and answer if you love the content don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.